Hey, what is up guys? It's Super User Stan here with an update on the Canon EOS R5 camera. So on Friday, Canon released some more information about the 8K video recording features of the next EOS R5 camera. They confirmed that it was again 8K capable and but most importantly it's 8k 30 confirmed and that there would be no crop in its 8k 30 performance meaning we're going to be seeing a full sensor readout of full frame for the 8k video also very importantly they confirmed that there's going to be 8k recording with dual pixel autofocus which is a very big deal in my previous video i talked about the resolution of being 45 megapixels and the reason why it, the 45 megapixels seems about right. It looks like all of my predictions are bang on correct. So if you wanna learn more about some of my predictions, I'll link the video right up here so that you can check it out. Or perhaps in the description down below, if you wanna know about the Kodak and whatever the capabilities of this R5 camera that I think is gonna come out. But one of the things I didn't know for sure or that I was questioning was, was it gonna have dual pixel autofocus? Because the One DX Mark III does not have dual pixel autofocus in a couple of its recorded modes. What this is really telling us is that Canon is basically putting their best foot forward and giving us full 8K capability uh, rather than you know time lapse or whatever. It, we're gonna get full 8K 30 and it seems less likely that Canon is gonna be uh, crippling this camera in any way. So the R5 is going to be something more akin to the 5D Mark II uh, when it first came on the market. This is going to be the 8K camera to have that Sony, Nikon, uh, Fuji, whatever. they The competitors have to play catch up with to be able to match the uh, EOS R5. Also, Canon confirmed that there's going to be several different autofocus modes. There's going to be autofocus of the body, autofocus of the, um, you know, eye detect, face detect, and they also announced that there's going to be autofocus for birds because you because you know that there's a lot of bird photographers and and, and to my knowledge, eye focus or bird detect for autofocus is is has not a thing yet. So uh, this is going to be pretty innovative in that in that field. So regarding release, up until now we had been told that the R5 would be coming sometime in July and then uh, maybe the R6 was going to be before that in June, right before, basically right before the Olympics. But uh, with the Olympics in, in doubt or in a little bit of doubt and especially with the whole virus thing going around and supply and being able to manufacture, there was rumors that this might be pushed to fall. Now, certainly Canon hasn't said anything about release date yet, but uh, I don't think we should take this drip feed of information as signaling that they are indeed pushing it back. I think the reason why we got a little bit more information right now is because of the cancellation of CP Plus and NAB. Uh, they kind of want to need they kind of need to get this information out there, and uh, I want to say that this was probably some of their talking points that they would have told customers or told consumers who talked to their representative. So again, I wouldn't look into this information signaling that it would be delayed by that much. I certainly wish or hope that they release on time in July, even if it's short quantities, um, you know, it'd be good to at least get a couple units in, in people's hands and for us to take a look so that we don't have to wait until fall and perhaps allow the competitors to catch up with their own version of their camera. Uh, I really do think that Canon should put their best foot forward, get this thing out in people's hands as soon as possible. So that was just a quick update. I really do think that this camera is going to be a game changer, especially for content creators, uh, DSLR video shooters, and, and YouTubers as well, because of the price price point isn't, you know, it, it's don't get me wrong, thirty five hundred. Um, what we're thinking the price is going to be thirty five hundred is expensive, but it's not like it's a cinema camera. 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. This is coming in at, at a relatively cheap price point for such good capability, at least on paper. So we'll have to see how it does once we get it in our hands. But, you know, it really looks like it's going to be a very interesting camera. So I'm, you know, the information that I'm hearing is telling me, making me want, want this camera more and more. So make sure to stick around if you want to hear more about this camera. I'll see you in the next one.